it's a shady underworld, off the radar of regular search engines. Weapons, drugs, pornography. On the dark net, users can browse on the wrong side of the law. They surf anonymously, unlike on the conventional internet where individual IP addresses leave behind a digital fingerprint. One of the best known ways into the dark net is through the Tor network. Tilman Frosch works at the Horst Götz Institute for IT Security in Bochum, where he looks after a Tor server. Here you can see the connections going in and out of the Tor server, but I can't say much more about it. That would defeat the purpose. We operate Tor primarily for research reasons. It's a system that tries to solve an interesting problem. It's nice to be part of it. And it's also a project worth supporting. The principle is simple. The user downloads a piece of software to access a Tor server. It then randomly redirects the user to other servers around the world, concealing their identity. It's ideal for criminals, but also for other groups. Darknet is a mirror of society, complete with search engines and social networking sites. Tor is used by the US military, human rights activists and by the politically oppressed. The potential of Tor became clear in Egypt in 2011. During the Arab Spring uprisings, the Mubarak regime tried to prevent young people using Facebook to arrange protests. Here you see the drop in internet traffic in Egypt. As you can see, that was the data traffic until the regime decided to block access to the internet. As the censorship tightened, the number of Tor users in Egypt increased. But Tor has a weakness. The user is not anonymous as they connect to the server. Freenet offers an alternative approach. Everyone who uses the network donates space on their hard drive, turning their computer into part of the anonymous darknet. But who's behind it? Florent Denier helped develop Freenet. By day, the Frenchman works as an IT consultant in London, where he shows firms how to protect sensitive data. By night, he works on Freenet. The general idea behind Freenet is to provide a censorship-resistant, secure, an anonymous um, way of people to publish and um, consume content. That makes Freenet popular, especially among file sharers. On well-known file sharing sites they are visible, but on Freenet they can disappear. Many file sharing sites are teeming with copyrighted material, but that's not a problem for the creators of Freenet. Their fundamental aim is freedom on the World Wide Web. You can't do censorship without having to be the judge and the jury of what should be censored. I don't know any system, including democracy, which would provide these properties. So basically for me, you can't have censorship at all. He says Freenet is a response to recent developments online. Search engines and social networking sites now collect user data without permission or any regulations. And dictators worldwide try to restrict the flow of information. If they don't like the content of a site, they block it. Tor and Freenet offer an alternative, even if they can be abused. 